Once upon a time, in the cradle of democracy and the birthplace of Western civilization, there existed a city that beckoned with tales of ancient glory and modern charm. Athens, in Greece, a city that transcends time, where history breathes through the ruins and culture dances in the streets. Hi everyone, and welcome to another episode of World with Wife. Today, we are in Athens, and we just showed you our amazing hotel room for this leg of our Greece Grand Tour. Set in the heart of Athens and with Monasteriki metro station reachable within 300 meters, our hotel room was very clean, comfortable, and beautiful. We even had a room with a jacuzzi and a very generous bathroom. As I opened the door into the street, ready to embark on or on a journey through Athens, I was greeted with this vibrant quarter, where every step is a dance between the ancient and the contemporary. The scent of blooming flowers mingles with the aroma of street food, creating a sensory symphony that sets the stage for a romantic escapade. It was where the whispers of history are carried by the gentle breeze, and it is where lies the enchanting neighborhood of Monasteriki. Monasteriki is more known as a vibrant flea market where the ancient meets the modern. We will have plenty of time to explore this part of Athens as this video is going to be almost one hour long. So settle in, grab a cup of coffee and do leave us a comment below after watching it. We have been to Athens several times. We have even featured it in a previous video we made. And of course the highlight of Athens, especially if you have never been there before, and definitely a must visit, is the old neighborhood of Plaka, right beneath the Acropolis of Athens, and the Lycabetus Hill, which is the highest point of Athens. But for today, in this episode, we are not going to bring you there. Instead, for today, we will walk around to discover the other areas of the city, and hopefully we can share with you another side of Athens, so that put together, with you other experiences, it will help you to create a better mental idea of what Athens is really about. Just like now, we are walking along the cobblestone streets, the air becomes infused with a sense of romance that transcends time. And it is also infused with the air of good food. I like Monasteriki, it is perhaps my favorite part of Athens. It is where I find that, despite the huge crowd and the ever busy bustling along the major arteries of Athens, the cobblestone alleys offer a more tranquil feel away from the chaos. It is also where I can just pick any small cafe or taverna and relax and enjoy myself comfortably. Athens is always crowded, always full of tourists, especially during the peak season, that typically spans from late spring to early autumn. During that time, it can feel quite chaotic. However, here in these alleys of Monasteriki, I always find a sense of order, as if life itself takes a step back, time slows down, and where the echoes of the past blend seamlessly with the rhythm of the present. But we are now leaving those more quiet quarters and heading towards the busy part of Athens. We were walking in this particular direction because we had to. My favorite restaurant in Athens was located further up the road. And it is not one of those fancy restaurants with Michelin stars and gourmet menus. It is one of those hidden gem that captures the essence of Greek hospitality and culinary tradition, where the tantalizing aroma of grilled meats and aromatic herbs always welcomes you. As you can see from the video, the landscape is changing slowly, and the crowd is getting larger gradually. As we strolled further in this hidden Athenian gem, we found ourselves drawn deeper into the ambience that sets it apart. The low hum of conversations, both in Greek and the accents of international visitors, creates a melodic backdrop to your dining experience. 
We were now along the famous Adrianou Street, a charming and historic street in the heart of Athens. Nestled against the backdrop of the Acropolis, Adrianou Street offers a delightful mix of traditional Greek tavernas, modern cafes, and charming eateries. The cobblestone street, lined with outdoor seating, invites you to indulge in a culinary journey with a view. Many cafes along Adrianou Street offer panoramic views of the Acropolis. Picture yourself sipping on a strong Greek coffee or enjoying a frappe while gazing at the ancient marvel. But we were here for the food. The moment we reached the restaurant, we both went inside to check out the open kitchen. It was located at the very back of the restaurant and it is a design concept in restaurants where the kitchen is visible to the diners. This setup offers transparency and a more interactive dining experience. Then once back at our dining table, we browsed through the menu. The prices were really reasonable, so we ordered as much as we could eat. To us, the primary advantage of an open kitchen is transparency. We can also witness the entire cooking process, from food preparation to the final plating and this fosters a connection between us and the chefs. Just look at all these amazing dishes. We had an awesome lunch, I was so full that I could barely walk. Full yes, but I was not completely satisfied. I wanted more. From Adrianou Street, you can easily walk to Thysio Square and Thysio Metro Station. In the other direction, you can walk towards the Acropolis of Athens. Along the way you will pass by the Temple of Hephaestus, which is one of the most well-preserved ancient Greek temples in Athens. On your right, just behind the metro line that passes between Adriano Street and the ancient site, is the Stoa Museum, also known as the Stoa of Attalos. This is a reconstructed ancient Greek building that serves as the Agora Museum. This museum houses artifacts and exhibits related to daily life in ancient Athens. It is adjacent to the Temple of Hephaestus, and is an integral part of the larger ancient Agora archaeological site. It may sound confusing, and I was too. For example, the ancient Agora is an archaeological site that served as the central gathering place in ancient Athens. It features notable structures like the Temple of Hephaestus and the Stoa of Attalos. The Agora provides insight into the civic life and commerce of ancient Athens. Adjacent to the ancient Agora, is the Roman Agora. And I will tell you more about it later on. I was busy looking for an important landmark. If I still remember correctly, from our past visits to Athens, this landmark should be located nearby. Finally my eyes caught something, and there it was. Hans and Gretel famous gelato. This is by far my favorite store in Athens, of course, food-wise that is. In the midst of ancient monuments, souvenir shops, and tavernas, you'll find this great candy shop. Let us go in and order something, shall we? This is a chain, there are several others like this in Greece, but this one in particular was my favorite. Service was good, as always, Greek hospitality is definitely top-notch here. They serve crepes, nicely baked donuts, fun slush flavors, gelato, and candies. But I was here for their gelato, although I could not get my eyes off these amazing looking donuts. Let's stay focused, ice cream it is. Just take a look at these colorful flavors, I had a hard time to choose. And even choosing the right ice cream cones was not an easy task. My husband bought two double scoops cones, so I was going to have four flavors to enjoy. 
While walking here, I was feeling full from the heavy lunch we just had. But once I was holding the ice cream cone in my hands, I felt that I could eat a dozen of these. This is their website, in case you want to find out more about them. Just next to Hans and Gretel was Da Vinci Gelato. This also looked like an amazing ice cream shop. I was going to come back there, and I will try that one too next time. For now, let us continue our walk. Oh, if you are looking for Hard Rock Cafe, it is located just up the road, near Da Vinci Gelato. We have always walked past, but we have also sticked to the local cuisine. Look at these bottle openers. That is witty. Right in front of us is AT Junction. Take the right turn and it will lead you towards the Roman Forum of Athens and towards the Gate of Athena Archegetis. Make a left turn instead and that should take you right towards Monastiriki Square and the Monastiriki Metro Station. Or go through the metal gate right ahead and this is the Hadrian's Library, or more specifically, a couple of standing columns of what remains of it, to this day. Built by Roman Emperor Hadrian in 132 AD it was a significant cultural and educational complex in Athens. It housed a vast collection of scrolls, featured lecture halls, and served as a center for intellectual exchange. Though in a state of partial ruin today, it remains a testament to the city's historical and educational significance. Right behind the library, there are some souvenir shops. I always come here whenever I visit Athens. They sell a range of items such as traditional Greek crafts, jewelry, clothing, ceramics, and other mementos. There is archaeological excavations and restoration ongoing at the Hadrian Library site. Efforts have been made to preserve and showcase its historical significance. While the library is not fully reconstructed, visitors can explore the remnants and get a sense of its original layout. Since we were not going towards the Acropolis, we turned left instead, in the direction of the Monastiriki Square. Along the way, we stopped by some shops to purchase some magnets, as souvenir. Nearby, there were a few street musicians playing and singing. Street musicians in Athens contribute to the vibrant street culture and offer a diverse range of musical styles. They also often incorporate elements of Greek culture and tradition into their performances. This connection with the local heritage enhances the cultural experience for both residents and visitors. At this time of the day, the streets were crowded and busy. It is always good advice to ensure that all your personal belongings are kept safely, and try to be aware of your immediate surroundings at all times. Near the square is the Church of the Pantanassa. Pantanassa is a term in Greek that translates to Queen of All, emphasizing the Virgin Mary's universal role. Like many Greek Orthodox churches, the architectural style of the Church of the Pantanassa is likely to be influenced by Byzantine and Orthodox traditions. Greek Orthodox churches often feature domes, frescoes, and iconography that are central to the Orthodox Christian worship. Walking past the church, we continued along another prominent and bustling thoroughfare in the heart of Athens. This is called Athena's Road and it extends through the city center, connecting Ammonia Square to Monastiriki Square. Hence Athena's Road runs through the commercial and historic center of Athens, and it is famous for its vibrant commercial activity. 
The street is lined with a diverse range of shops, boutiques, and stores, offering everything from clothing and accessories to household goods and souvenirs. Athena's street is dotted with numerous restaurants, cafes, and eateries. Here you can enjoy both traditional Greek cuisine and international flavors. The street is also popular for those looking to savor local delicacies. We came across this pastry shop that was showcased an impressive selection of freshly baked goods, including an assortment of bread, pastries, and sweet treats. It also had its own small open kitchen, freshly made sandwiches as well as great coffees. Right next door there was another shop, this time offering a wide range of gourmet products, including cured meats, cheeses, olives, and other delicacies. These shops often provide an opportunity to taste and purchase high-quality, locally sourced ingredients. But what caught our attention were the huge loaves of bread on display. They looked delicious. There were also an impressive selection of pastries and sweet treats. If you are ever in Athens, do seek out traditional Greek bakeries that showcase an array of bread, from the classic Greek country bread to specialty loaves infused with local herbs or grains. Bakeries often take pride in using traditional recipes and high-quality ingredients. So try to look for family-run bakeries that have been serving locals and visitors for generations. And do not hesitate to ask locals for their favorite recommendations. They can guide you to hidden gems, family-run establishments, or neighborhood bakeries that have a reputation for serving delicious delicacies. Further up, there were other interesting shops, for example this shop was selling backpacks, luggages, leather products as well as sunglasses and eyewears. And tucked away just next to that shop was a small Ottoman era Greek Orthodox church, known as the Holy Church of Saint Kyriaki. We went inside to light a candle. It was like a small oasis of spirituality, nestled right in the center of a bustling street. One of the highlights along Athena's street is the Athens Central Market, also known as Varvakeo's Market. The market building itself is a notable structure with an iron and glass roof. It was designed by the architect I. Megawis and constructed in 1886. The architecture reflects the style of the time and contributes to the market's unique character. Here, you'll find a variety of fresh fish and seafood, including octopus, squid, shrimp, and a selection of Mediterranean catches. Varvakeo's market is divided into different sections, each focusing on specific products. The main sections include the meat market, fish market, vegetable and fruit market, and delicatessen market. Each section offers a diverse range of fresh and local products. The meat market is particularly renowned for its selection of meats, including lamb, beef, pork, and poultry. Local butchers showcase their cuts, and the market is known for its lively atmosphere and traditional butchering techniques. Varvakeo's Market is a must-visit for anyone interested in exploring the local food scene in Athens. The market's rich history, diverse offerings, and lively ambience make it a cultural and culinary destination in the heart of the city. Leaving the market, we walked deeper into the heart of the city until we came across this majestic church, amidst a neighborhood of small restaurants and shops. The Holy Church of the Dormition of the Virgin Mary Chrysospiliatissa is located in the historical center of the city of Athens, specifically on Aeolia Street, number 60. It was first erected in the year 1705, during a time when Athens was under Ottoman rule. It was named the Holy Church of the Dormition of the Virgin Mary Chrysospiliatissa because the esteemed holy monastery of the Great Cave significantly contributed to its reconstruction. 
The adjective Chrysospiliatissa was given because of the significant contribution of the holy monastery of the Great Cave to its reconstruction. The construction work took about seven years and was completed in 1821, the same year as the Greek War of Independence. The church was designed by the famous architect Demetrius Zazos, who is considered as the person who introduced the Greek Byzantine architectural style. However, Zazos died before the construction began. The church is a magnificent example of the eclecticism style that was popular in the 19th century. Some of the notable features of the church include its intricate cloison masonry, double light windows, and marble decorations. Right outside the church, you'll find yourself immersed in the enchanting ambience of its surroundings. The gentle hum of city life resonates harmoniously with the tranquility exuded by the sacred edifices that adorn this historic path. Just around the corner was a charming cafe that transcends the ordinary, inviting patrons into a haven of tranquility and refined taste. The outdoor seating area is a sanctuary amidst the urban bustle, and it was so inviting that we decided to take a short break and to sit down and relax for a while. The name of this cafe is Folk Coffee, and it is a modern venue with comfortable seating and great coffee options. We hope you're enjoying the content so far. If you are, don't forget to hit that like button. It really helps us out. We've got so much more exciting content lined up, and we'd love for you to be a part of our growing community. If you haven't already, consider subscribing to the channel. By hitting that subscribe button, you'll stay updated with all our latest videos. After our coffee break, it was time to continue our tour of Athens. We were still along Aeolio Street, making our way towards Ermu Street, which is one of the main shopping streets in the city. We were also next to Siri neighborhood, a trendy and bohemian neighborhood, adorned with street art, making it an attractive area for those looking to explore Athens beyond the traditional tourist sites. Right at the corner of Aegeus Irenus and Ialu Street, just opposite Ancho Mexican Grill was the Holy Church of St. Irene. The church is a three-aisle basilica with a dome and two steeples of neoclassical style, an original building that combines Western Renaissance with Byzantine influences. St. Irene, also known as Irene of Thessalonica, is venerated as a Christian martyr and saint in the Eastern Orthodox Church. Her feast day is celebrated on May 5th. Legend has it that Irene miraculously escaped various attempts to execute her. It is said that a heavenly light surrounded her, making her invisible to those who sought to harm her. Do you want to know more about what makes Athens, Athens? In the heart of the Attica Peninsula, embraced by the ancient mountains of Egalia and Hymettus, Athens stood as a living testament to millennia of history. The city, with its whitewashed buildings echoing tales of gods and philosophers, unfolded against the backdrop of the Saronic Gulf. Athens wasn't just a city, it was a living chronicle, the birthplace of Western civilization. Within its city limits, Athens bustled with life. The echoes of footsteps on cobbled streets intertwined with the whispers of the past. A proud population of approximately 660,000 within the city limits moved through its narrow alleyways, bearing witness to a history stretching back thousands of years. Athens wasn't merely a city of stone and mortar, it was a living entity, an economic and political force shaping the destiny of a nation. In the shadow of the Acropolis, where ancient philosophers once debated the foundations of democracy, modern leaders grappled with the complexities of governance.
And around the corner, Ermu Street emerges as a vibrant artery, weaving through the urban landscape with a tale of commerce, culture, and the indomitable spirit of the city. Along its cobbled path, modernity intertwines with antiquity, creating an ambience where ancient history and contemporary commerce coexist. Ermu Street, named after Hermes, not the shopping brand, but the messenger of the gods, seems to carry whispers of both the divine and the mundane. Strolling down Ermu, we encountered a myriad of shops, boutiques, and establishments, each contributing to the street's lively symphony. Storefronts adorned with the latest fashion trends share space with traditional artisans, offering a blend of styles that mirrors the eclectic nature of Athens itself. Ermu Street is a shopper's haven, where local and international brands beckon to those seeking the latest trends or unique treasures. Amidst the hustle and bustle of Ermu Street, there lies a hidden gem, a small church that seems to cradle a piece of tranquility in the heart of the vibrant city. This is the Holy University Church of the Presentation of He Virgin Mary. Tucked away from the commercial dance of shops and cafes, this modest sanctuary serves as a quiet refuge, a pause button in the lively narrative of Athens. As we ambled along Ermu, it's easy to miss the unassuming entrance that leads to the small church. Its presence is hinted at by the gentle chime of bells and the occasional murmur of prayers escaping through the door. Or just follow the beautiful live band that is often seen performing right in front of the little church. Stepping inside feels like entering a different realm where the fervor of commerce yields to a serenity that transcends time. The interior is adorned with the flickering glow of candles and the soft hues of ancient frescoes that tell stories of faith and devotion. Wooden pews stand as witnesses to countless moments of reflection, where weary souls find solace amidst the urban whirlwind just beyond the church doors. Often referred to as the Fashion Boulevard of Athens, and rightly so, clothing stores, shoe boutiques, and accessory shops line the street, offering the latest trends and timeless classics. But Ermu is more than just a shopping destination, it is an open-air gallery of urban life. Street performers, artists, and musicians often find a stage along its bustling sidewalks, infusing the air with creativity. The city's rhythm becomes palpable as the sounds of laughter, footsteps, and occasional melodies intermingle. The notes of a guitar, played by a skilled busker, and the familiar tune she was singing, transforms the sidewalk into a live concert, each note and each lyric, a brushstroke on the canvas of urban life. The musicians draw inspiration from the city's rich heritage, infusing their performances with the soulful echoes of traditional Greek melodies. Yet, the music is not confined to the past, it's a dynamic conversation between history and the present, between the familiar and the innovative. Sidewalk cafes and eateries allow for moments of respite, providing ideal vantage points for people watching the stylish Athenians strolling by, the occasional street performer adding a touch of artistry to the scene. Now is the time to tell you a story, one of creation and of God. Once upon a time, in the age of myths and legends, when the world was still young, there existed a land bathed in the golden glow of the gods. This land was to be a beacon of civilization, a cradle of wisdom, and a testament to the divine craftsmanship of the Olympian deities. This land was to be known as Athens. In the celestial realm of Mount Olympus, the gods convened to craft a city that would shine as a beacon of civilization. 
Athena, the goddess of wisdom, envisioned Athens, and Hephaestus, the master blacksmith, sculpted its majestic form. Dionys, the god of celebration, infused the city with a spirit of community, gifting the people with arts and culture. As the gods marveled at their creation, Zeus declared Athens the birthplace of democracy, philosophy, and the arts. The city flourished, with minds like Socrates and Aristotle paving the way for the pursuit of knowledge. Athens became a cradle of civilization, its streets echoing with the footsteps of those who embraced the divine glow of wisdom. And finally the gods smiled upon their creation, knowing that the flame they ignited in Athens would cast its radiant light across the vast expanse of human history, inspiring generations to come. In the ancient tapestry of Greek history, Athens' legacy unfolded through the crucible of wars that tested not just their metal but the very essence of their civilization. As the menacing shadows of the Persian Empire loomed over Greece, the Athenians, guided by the wisdom of leaders like Miltiades, rose to defend their homeland. At the Battle of Marathon, against overwhelming odds, their phalanx stood unyielding, a shield against the Persian tide. Victory crowned their courage, and a new chapter in Athenian glory began. Yet, the echoes of war refused to fade, and the Persians returned like a relentless storm. Themistocles, the cunning Athenian strategist, saw the answer on the waves. At the Battle of Salamis, Athenian triremes danced with the wind, outmaneuvering the colossal Persian fleet. The sea itself became a battleground, and Athens emerged triumphant, securing the freedom of Greece. Today, tourism, a modern odyssey, weaves a narrative of prosperity. Travelers from every corner of the globe seek solace in the ruins of the past, contribute to the pulse of the present, and become part of Athens' ongoing story. And in the chambers of geopolitics, Athens stands shoulder to shoulder with fellow European brethren. As a member of the European Union, Greece and its capital city benefit from economic support, infrastructure development, and a collaborative vision that transcends national borders. All right, that's enough history and facts for now. Let us continue with the tour, I worry you get bored and fall asleep. We were still walking along Ermu Street. Starting near Monasteriki Square, Ermu Street stretches towards Syntagma Square, creating a dynamic pathway that captures the essence of Athens' urban life. Syntagma Square, located in the heart of Athens, is more than just a bustling city square, it is a dynamic hub that pulsates with the energy of modern life while retaining echoes of the nation's storied past. During the day, as the sun climbed above the city's horizon, Syntagma Square was bursting with life. Its vast expanse sprawled out before the grandeur of the Greek Parliament building, an architectural testament to the nation's democratic ideals. This square, whose very name whispered of constitution and governance, stood as the beating heart of the city. The square's name, Syntagma, translates to constitution in English, reflecting its historical significance. Dominating one side of the square is the Greek Parliament building. The neoclassical structure, formerly the Royal Palace, stands as an architectural symbol of the nation's democratic governance. The changing of the guard, conducted by the Evzones, the ceremonial guards in traditional attire, is a daily spectacle in front of the tomb of the unknown soldier. Syntagma Square has been a focal point for public gatherings and demonstrations, reflecting the pulse of the Greek people and their commitment to democratic principles. 
The square has been a witness to crucial moments in Greek history, serving as a central stage for political events, protests, and celebrations. And its name is derived from the constitution that King Otto, Greece's first modern monarch, was obliged to grant after a popular and military uprising in 1843. And so, as the sun slowly started to dip lower, Syntagma Square remained a sentinel of time. It stood as a living monument, a storyteller recounting the tales of a nation that had endured, thrived, and continued to shape its destiny against the backdrop of this sacred space. The sunlight, reflecting against the surrounding buildings, illuminated the square, was like a beacon that guided both citizens and wanderers alike through the pages of Greece's eternal narrative. Leaving the Syntagma Square, we made a right turn on Stadio Street, one of the major commercial streets in the center of Athens. Notable for hosting upscale shopping options, Stadio Street features boutiques from well-known international fashion houses. Just a few steps away from Syntagma Square were famous watches boutiques like Choppard and Omega. And walk a few steps further, you will be greeted by Hermes and Ferragamo boutiques. If you want to shop for luxury brands in Athens, it is definitely one of the areas you need to check out. There are several other brands in the vicinity, like Louis Vuitton, Fugari, Chanel, Coach, Hublot, just to name a few. Besides fashion brands, luxury jewelry shops offering exquisite pieces are also located in this area. Along Stadio Street, you can find several historic buildings and architectural landmarks, and these structures showcase a mix of neoclassical and modern architectural styles, reflecting the city's rich history. The National Historical Museum in Athens, established in 1882, is Greece's oldest historical museum. Housed in the old Parliament House on Stadio Street, which served as the Hellenic Parliament from 1875 to 1932, this museum has a rich history. A branch of the National History Museum has been in operation at this location since 2001. In front of the museum stand the statue of Theodorus Kolokotronis. Known as the Old Man of Maria, he was a key leader in the Greek Revolution. He played a crucial role in shaping modern Greece, not just in battles like the Siege of Tripolitsa and the Battle of Dervanakia, but also in building the new state. His efforts were vital to the success of the national struggle for freedom. Further down the road was the Panepistimio metro station, and this is located next to the National and Capodistrian University of Athens. This is the oldest university in Greece and one of the most prestigious institutions of higher education in the country. Thirty-seven and named after Ioannis Kapodistrias, a prominent Greek statesman, the university's main campus and central buildings are situated near the historic center of Athens. The university offers a wide range of undergraduate and postgraduate programs across various disciplines. These include humanities, social sciences, natural sciences, engineering, health sciences, and more. The university is known for its academic excellence and has contributed significantly to Greece's intellectual and cultural heritage. The building, as well as the statues, are truly marvelous. As soon as you reach the first steps in front of the university, you can appreciate the intricate beauty of both the statues and the building. 
The architecture of the university seamlessly combines neoclassical design with contemporary elements, symbolizing the connection between Greece's rich past and its vibrant present. The central building, adorned with iconic columns and an impressive facade, is not only an architectural wonder but also a symbol of academic excellence. The university's library is really something special. It's packed with tons of books, journals, and manuscripts, making it a goldmine for both researchers and students. The stuff you can find here is priceless if you're looking to dig deeper into your studies. And that's not all, the university is all about pushing the boundaries in research and scholarship. They're constantly publishing, hosting conferences, and teaming up with folks from around the world. It's a real hotspot for smart thinking and creating new knowledge. It's the biggest university in Greece, second only to the Aristotle University of Thessaloniki. They've got over 40,000 undergrad students and a team of more than 2,000 teachers and researchers. Ranked among the top universities globally, the National and Kapodistrian University of Athens stands as Greece's foremost institution of higher education. And as I have mentioned, in the field research university, it has been a leader since 1837, dedicated to advancing knowledge and preparing students to excel in the evolving needs of the 21st century for both the nation and the community. All of this by promoting creativity, social awareness, and critical thinking by fostering open dialogue and cultivating a culture of integrity and diversity. Next to the University is the Academy of Athens, also known as the Athenian Academy or the Academy of Sciences, Humanities, and Fine Arts. It was officially founded in 1926, although its roots can be traced back to the philosophical schools of ancient Athens, particularly Plato's Academy. The primary purpose of the Academy of Athens is to promote scientific, literary, and artistic achievements in Greece. And I guess it serves as the country's highest research establishment and contributes to the advancement of knowledge in various fields. The Academy itself is organized into several research divisions, with each focusing on a specific discipline such as natural sciences, humanities, fine arts, social sciences, and applied sciences. As I walked nearer to the main building, I was noticing the fruit trees that lined up the alley leading to it. Could these fruits be eaten? Anyway, membership in the Academy of Athens is an honor and is awarded to individuals who have made significant contributions to their respective fields. Members, known as academicians, are elected by their peers. And before I forget, the emblem of the Academy of Athens is an owl, a symbol traditionally associated with wisdom in Greek culture. This emblem reflects the institution's commitment to the pursuit and dissemination of knowledge. The Academy is also involved in a wide range of activities, including conducting research, organizing conferences, publishing scientific works, and providing expertise and advice to the government on matters related to science, culture, and education. It often collaborates with other academic institutions and organizations globally, fostering international cooperation in scientific and scholarly endeavors. As you have seen for yourself, the building is truly breathtaking, both in its interior and exterior. It's highly recommended to explore and appreciate its architecture and design and the entire structure is crafted from marble, exhibiting flawless craftsmanship. The ambience is pristine, creating a magnificent atmosphere as you explore both the surroundings and the interior. And right in front of the Academy was the statue of Plato, who was an ancient Greek philosopher and also the founder of the Academy in Athens. 
The statue stands proudly, portraying Plato in a contemplative stance, as if deeply engrossed in conversation with his disciples. The meticulous attention to detail in the facial expression and clothing showcases the exceptional skill of the artist, imparting a sense of vitality and authenticity to the figure. On the left side of the university is the Valia Neo Megaron. This is the building of the National Library of Greece, also known as Athens National Library of Greece. The National Library of Athens, together with the Academy of Athens and the University of Athens, forms the Athenian Trilogy. This delightful neoclassical edifice in the center of Athens has served as the home to the library's extensive collection, totaling around 1 million items, for the last 114 years. Owing to the growing number of books and advancements in technology, a decision was made to move the library to a more spacious and contemporary facility. Consequently, in 2018, the library found its new home at the Stavros Nyachos Foundation Cultural Center. A portion of its book collection is still housed in the Panapistimiu Avenue building. Just outside, you'll come across a statue of Panais Athenais Vagliano, a shipowner from Kefalonia who generously contributed a substantial amount for the construction of the National Library of Greece's original building. This Athenian trilogy is a must-visit if you are in Athens. Oh one more thing, right behind the library building, there is the National Library Park. It is absolutely stunning and impeccably maintained, with a serene ambience, all while providing a peaceful environment for a leisurely stroll. It's perfect for families, offering delightful amenities for children. We have been out since this morning, and as you can see, the sun has already set and it was already night in Athens. But our adventure was not over yet. So let us keep on going. And please do remember to like our video, and kindly do subscribe to our channel, if you have not done so yet. We were currently making our way towards Ammonia Square, which initially, was known as Platea Anacteron, meaning Palace Square. It was built in 1846 as part of the original plan for constructing the palace. Originally named Athonos Square in honor of King Otto, the first monarch of Greece, the square underwent a name change in 1862 after Otto's dethronement. It was then renamed Omanoia Square to commemorate the spot where leaders from opposing political factions took an oath of peace, ammonia, signaling an end to hostilities. The fountain of Omanoia Square is one of the largest water fountains in Europe in terms of water volume. The 30-meter-wide fountain shoots water 20 meters high. It has a total of 188 water jets and 177 underwater lights. Earlier during this video, I mentioned about Athena's street, that starts from Monasteriki Square. Well, this is where it ends, right here at Omanoia Square. And that is the same street we need to take now, to go back to our hotel. Along the way, we passed by the Athens City Hall, which is the municipal seat of government for the city. Athens City Hall is considered a landmark in the city, contributing to the architectural and historical character of Athens. Its neoclassical design is in harmony with many other buildings in the surrounding area. Then we walked past Varvakio's central municipal market, and when we reached near our hotel, we were greeted by a vibrant and lively neighborhood, and the ambience at night was truly captivating. The area comes alive with the sounds of people chatting, music playing, and the general hum of activity as both locals and tourists explore the numerous bars, tavernas, and nightclubs. And as we were walking, we were drawn by bright lights and loud music coming from right in front. Something interesting must be happening there and we decided to check it out. And this was by far, 
as in, really by a very large margin, the most amazing Halloween decoration we have ever seen in our life. Little Kook is a whimsical and enchanting cafe located in the Siri neighborhood of Athens, just a few minutes walk from our hotel. It is known for its extravagant and fantastical decor that transforms the entire space into a fairy tale like environment. Just look at the way they decorated the alleys, the shop frontage, the dining tables and chairs as well as the buildings surrounding the cafe. Little Kook had undergone a mesmerizing Halloween transformation, turning into a spellbinding haunt in the heart of Athens. The cafe was completely enveloped in eerie enchantment, with ghastly yet whimsical decorations that transport visitors into a spooky storybook world. The entire space was a ghostly spectacle, adorned with cobwebs, hauntingly beautiful pumpkins, and other sinister surprises. Dark hues and mysterious lighting set the stage for an otherworldly atmosphere, creating an immersive Halloween experience. And they had a shop next to the cafe that gave a hint and preview of the upcoming magical Christmas metamorphosis, transforming into a winter wonderland. The entire space was glowing with the warm twinkle of Christmas lights, adorned with oversized ornaments, snowy scenes, and whimsical touches. But for now, let us go back to enjoying what they had done for Halloween. Diverse seating areas beckoned the guests with their own unique spooky themes, from haunted forests to ghostly graveyards. Every nook and cranny of the cafe was adorned with attention-grabbing details, promising an Instagram-worthy setting that captures the spirit of the season. As you step into Little Kook during Halloween, be prepared for a bewitching journey where each corner tells a different tale. The menu complements the eerie ambience with creatively themed delights, offering a delectable and visually stunning experience that perfectly aligns with the spooky season. Since it was too crowded for proper photo taking, we decided that the best thing to do was to go back to our hotel, that was just nearby, and to return here, once more, in the morning, when hopefully, there would be no crowd. Our hotel, Mellow Athens, had a very beautiful rooftop, and we decided to go up and take a moment to enjoy the night views of the city of Athens, from there. Against the night sky, the Acropolis forms a dramatic silhouette, commanding attention and evoking a sense of timelessness. The dark backdrop allows the illuminated details to stand out, emphasizing the significance of this historical monument. From our vantage point, we could enjoy panoramic views of the city lights stretching out as far as our eyes could see. The contrast between the ancient marvel and the modern cityscape created a mesmerizing scene. As night fell, Athens came alive with a myriad of lights. The cityscape, with its mix of modern and historical architecture, transformed into a twinkling panorama. The next morning, we woke up early. Our hotel had made arrangement for us to have breakfast at the cafe, located just opposite it. And it was all included into the price we paid. And since we had been to Athens several times, we knew that the best time to avoid the crowd was definitely early in the morning. We could now walk around and snap photographs without having to worry about people always stepping into the frame. And we decided to go back towards Little Kook so that we could snap some photos. Today was going to be our last day in Athens and we would soon be leaving for the airport and en route for another travel adventure. As we wrap up our time in Athens, our heart was still lingering in the echoes of ancient history and the twinkling lights of the city. From whispering tales of centuries gone by, to the rooftop bars offering a front row seat to the city's heartbeat, Athens has woven its magic around us. As our journey through Athens came to an end, my only wish is that this city has left a mark on your soul, much like it had on mine. If you felt the same magic, 
hit that like button, and if you're yearning for more adventures, don't forget to subscribe. And this bring our grand tour of Greece to an end. In our next episode, we will explore another amazing country. We will be going to Portugal. To all the dreamers and wanderers out there, until we meet again in another episode of World with Wife, remember that every goodbye is a promise of a new hello. Until next time, let's keep chasing sunsets and making memories. And thank you for joining me on this journey.